But recently I've been looking at um at GIG and it's it's a new platform um it, you know it you can buy games off it and so forth and since everyone knows Steam I thought I'd start with that and um well, this isn't really like a death battle kind of thing where it's like which one's better how how good are they you know it's it's more of just a a review kind of thing for GOG because I'm going to compare it to Steam and see um from what I know of Steam how good I think this platform is what and whether or not I think it ever stands a chance at um surpassing the the great giant that is um Steam and on the store PC, PC storefront, um, so let's start off with the first most notable thing is that we have um, GOG Chan, which they recently took away. Sadly, um, the good things about uh, GOG that Steam doesn't have is this community wish list, which isn't the same thing that Steam has, where you can just put down lists of games that you um want to pay for in the future, you know, like, on a kind of a watch list. This is wish list where you request certain features and games and so forth, like, for instance, with the games, um, one of the ones that I really want to come through is Metal Gear, because I'm super keen for that, because I hear it's, like, one of my Japanese animes, so I, I put in a vote, you know, it's, it's, no longer in the top 10, sadly, but, you know, it's, it's up there as one of the most requested um, wishes. You, you can search here, um, or you can add your own. It's, it's not really that hard. You can do this for features, for um, movies, for games, for anything, so it's really good. Um, and sometimes they get around to it, so, you know, even if GOG isn't that good now, this feature is, like, incredibly huge, because... The, the site's still building, it's still growing, it, it's always got potential to become something better because of this, and I really like this. There's also the other thing where it's like, I hate DRM so much, like this, as I watched the um, Noquid doc documentary on this um, GOG, it's actually how I found out about GOG and decided to sign up with them and get them, is everything is DRM free, baby. So I can just search on here, buy anything, and not have to worry about after having purchased something, going through the game files to see if it is or isn't actually DRM free to check things like Red Shell Spyware or what have you to know that is not fucking with me. As well, one of the complaints that I have, you know, they even made a whole site to like fuck the just to show how much they want to fuck DRM is fucking hilarious. I highly recommend checking out the thing. I'll, I'll um, leave a link in the description because I'm not sure if I'll be able to eye icon this. There's also the other thing that, like, when I go shopping on on this, I can just fucking get an Australian currency. It's none of this USD shit that you find on Steam here. Like, I don't want to have to pull out a calculator and figure out how much 9.89 US is. I think it's about fourteen dollars Australian. Um. So being able to see an AU do is a huge thing for me that I'm like, fuck yeah. So um, one of the good things though about Steam as opposed to it is, as you could have told going from this to the other one, is the UI in Steam is a hell of a lot better, easier to navigate, you know, drop down menus from side list of the different tabs. It kind of has that before, but it, it just, it's got a lot easier to navigate in Steam. You just feel way more at home using it, I guess. And um, something that GOG doesn't currently have is the workshop, which Steam does. Only like a handful of the games that I actually own use it. You know, um, just got going on to play time here. Like only a handful of them use it. Most notably it would be Left 4 Dead, of course. Um, but, you know, because it's like some of, like, Team Fortress expects you to pay for the fucking mods. It's so stupid. But, um, is this nice to have anyway? Like, I, like, Steam, to me, seems like one of the, big, like, biggest because it has this, even though it's a small feature. And you could just go to site Nexus Mods for all your mods, even though that only has a handful of games as well. Um, and the review system, um for Steam is actually pretty good as well. 
as you um, may know, you can do plenty of things like you can edit your review, write who checks it, um, see who votes up and down. Like you can you can do that elsewhere, but one of the bigger you can see who votes up and down. You can enable and disable comments. However, on GOG, you, G, you can't comment or anything, which I actually kind of like, but not being able to edit my reviews makes me a bit concerned. Plus, you always have to put in a star rating, which I absolutely hate. I've covered it before. It's um arbitrary number. People don't look at my my points for my um argument. They just look at the the rating, and I don't even feel like giving a rating is a good thing all the time because you know it, it then makes people do top tens list of what's better and what's worse. As I talked about before on IGN's reviews, I prefer to much prefer to just be able to give it a thumbs up for I recommend this game or a thumbs down for I don't recommend this. You know. And just explain what I think about it, what's good and what's bad in in the kind of review. But you know, being able to edit uh, and so forth is a huge thing, which I hope is a feature that's later added to reviews. But currently, as it stands, Steam is just miles above in terms of how they do reviews overall. Um, it's nice that it still has reviews in retrospect, GOG. But you know, I think I'll stick to Steam. Although Steam does have um, trading, which kind of sucks, and it has a way bigger library, as you know, infamously, Steam pumps out um, like a couple hundred games a day, like 60, 40, 60, I'd say. Yeah, I'd, I'd say about 40 games a day. Um, whereas GOG gets like a couple a week, like five a week. However, the good thing there with GOG is. GOG is actually curated, so that means that they they actually go through humans to check if the game is actually valid, if it's playable, if it has a functioning EXE, there's no um, viruses in the fucking game software, you know, shit like that. So everything that goes on there is something that you're not going to be scammed out of when you purchase it, so you can purchase freely without worrying about that. However, I feel like it's a huge detriment to not have, like, much of a library. Like, this has about, um, like, 2.6 thousand, like, yeah, so it's got 2,600, um, however, it does have a refund policy that's pretty nice. However, I still feel that Steam's refund policy is way better and more generous with it being... 14 days after having purchased, or two hours of playtime, which is another reason why playtime is nice to have visible, to be able to see, you know, I played six hours of this, or I can't refund it, or some some, some shit like that, you know, this is, is under time, I could refund it if, if it hasn't been two weeks or 14 days, but you know. There is a better refund policy on this, but I don't know how good it is. I'm pretty sure it's not as good. Um, plus, as well, the 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 options in this there's not really much of a um no real like overlay properly. Like so, when you're playing games on Steam, you'll be able to like get an FPS counter and shit and and all of these sort of different things, like if you press shift and tab at the same time, I think that's a standard button prompt it is for everyone, um, because you can change it, and you'll be able to pull up, like, different fucking features, be able to browse for mods and check up what's going on with your friends, message them, there is a messaging system in GOG, just to clarify, I haven't really checked out how good that is, so I'm not going to compare those, but, um, <clears throat> You know, just just having that feature is huge because as I'm setting up games, I like to look at my FPS counter, see how good or bad that is to be able to, you know, just adjust accordingly. So I really hope that GOG gets that because that's a huge thing, just being able to have that Steam overlay. As well, like, in in this, I, I just love my screenshots. I've got, like, fucking 1,200 screenshots, you know, so... Having the ability to screenshot, which I don't think GOG has, I could be wrong, GOG may have it, but I haven't found whatever the button prompt is for it. I don't see any settings for it. There's no Steam overlays. There's no overlay. Um, 
I guess that would be GOG Galaxy overlay for that one. So I don't I don't think that's gonna be a thing. Um I am glad that there's no trading though, because then you won't get scammed out of your shit for that. Uh, however you, you don't have to pay for the um the background thing on your profile because you usually have to pay and trade for them. So like on your profile you you just well, actually, you kind of do pay for it, because I got that one for paying for the actual game. And it does seem to be a weird achievement thing, like it... Um, there are achievements in this, but I'm not sure how like Steam they are, because m all of my achievements have been more off the game, and like, I played for 25 hours, it took me 39 to beat the game, so I'm, you know, just shit like that. Um. But, you know, it, so far, GOG is good. But if I were to find, like, conclude and say, like, do I think this is a challenger for Steam? Not in its current state. No. There's not enough games um, to bring people over yet. It do, GOG does have um, older games that they have been able to get the licenses to and sell. So, um... That may attract people, but apart from that, there's there's not a hell of a lot of reason for people to go over unless Steam keeps fucking things up with loot boxes and trading and the like. And um, there's there's only like minor things like maybe someone who's super against DRM or wants to be able to see the currency and uh they their current uh country's currency like mine being AUD, um. You know, that is still kind of minor though. That, so maybe in a couple years when Steam builds up, <laughs> when GOG builds up a library of games, I think then sure, it, it totally has potential. It's It's got enough um, features and shit into it that I think, you know, with a bit of polish, with a couple more features, just, just, just a couple more, um, and uh, a hell of a lot more games, and yeah, in a, in a couple of years or so, I'd, I'd absolutely see this being a strong contender for Steam on the um, PC marketplace front, absolutely. Um, and honestly, I kind of hope that it happens. I mean, I'm going to still be using Steam either way, even though I love GOG more. <laughs> Bring GOG chat back, please. Um, I'm still going to be using Steam because, you know, I've still got that first impressions thing. And with GOG being so good, there's not really any reason for me to do it, really. But on Steam, I guess there kind of is. And I'm not really going over to twit uh, itch.io because <laughs> itch can get fucked. Except for those free games, I might pick out those. But that's just the bargain bin of the collection. GOG certainly a lot better than itch.io. Like, there's, there's that in the least. Um, so, yeah, in a couple of years, I think, I think this will be a big thing, perhaps.